So a huge welcome to everyone. Good morning, good evening from whatever co corner of the world you join us from. This is the inaugural mentorship program meeting, the second part of this meeting held on the 1st of March, 2024. Just to let you know, the meeting will be recorded. Um, and so we ask that uh, anyone who is not comfortable with this recording, please feel free to let me know now. Uh, just a quick disclaimer, any and all views expressed by speakers today are in no way connected to their affiliated institutions. All views expressed of the speakers themselves and are their opinions made in their personal capacities, just so we can get the formalities out of the way. Okay, so I, before we begin with, you know, the agenda and what we're here to speak about today, um, I found this really interesting quote, um, with careful guidance and mentorship, you will reach your highest self. So when we see a quote like this, I think it gives a perfect understanding of what mentorship can be and what mentorship you know, is envisioned for so many people. And mentorship is the opportunity for you to kind of progress in whatever way or shape that looks like for you. I think that's the unique and fun thing about mentoring is that it can take whatever form um, you see you know, and what you envision with your mentor or your mentee. So for the agenda, very rough agenda, but um, just so that we know what we'll be discussing today. Firstly, I'll be going over what the mentorship program is. Then we'll look at what is mentoring and go through some of the questions that I've received about mentoring, broadly speaking. Then we'll go at how can you gain from the mentoring experience? And this is a chance for us to have a discussion with you, the attendees, so that we can find out what you wish to envision from this mentoring experience and why you joined the mentorship program. And lastly, um, we'll discuss how to facilitate your mentoring experience. So what this looks like, maybe some questions, how to engage with your mentor or your mentee, respectively. So what is the mentoring program? Um, the mentorship program is part of the IUCN WCEL Early Career Specialist Group. Um, we have the mentorship program as a project within the Early Career Specialist Group, and the mentorship program is split into two parts, I would say. The first is the mentoring element of it, and the second is the early career talks. So the mentoring element is what everyone has been engaged in up until now. So um, the process with pairing mentors and mentees and starting a mentoring dynamic and a re mentoring relationship. The second is the early career talks where we engage with our mentors and our mentees to discuss with them on elements of their early career journey. And these early career talks can range from skills development workshops, which is what we're planning for the second half of the year, how to uh, develop your soft skills and your hard skills for any transition in the environmental law field, how to maybe transition from a job outside of environmental law into environmental law, um, what you need maybe to develop your careers going forward and career planning. Um, and on the other side of the early career talks, we have one-on-one -on -one interviews and panel discussions and open sessions with um, different mentors and different mentees to find their early career journeys. So the interesting thing about all of us is that I think we all have a unique early career journey or a career journey, broadly speaking. And it's great to hear um, everyone's firsthand account of how they got to where they got to and you know, maybe the steps they learned along the way. So that's what we're trying to envision in the early career talks paired with the mentoring. So I don't do this alone. Um, I thankfully have a fantastic team that um, have helped me along this process. Some of them are here today. So I ask anyone who is involved in the mentorship program team to use the raise hand function so everyone can see who you are um, in the chat and we can see who you are, broadly speaking. Just raise your hand so that we know. Um, Saeed and, and Famo are two of the project team members and they have been there from the very start with me. Um, and they have really been the stellar team helping me along the way. Um, I'm really glad to have them here with me this morning. And I had the other half of the team here with me last night. So it's great to have you with us. So now for the selection process. So I'm sure all of you have completed your Google Forms and you've been allocated your mentor or your mentee. That process was a really extensive process for us as a team because we took each of the Google Form um, inputs that we received and we compared each mentor and mentee uniquely. So we were each allocated a mentee and from that we looked in, through our entire list of mentors that had submitted to the program to pair each mentee specifically with a mentor. We took all of the criteria that you filled in into consideration. We came up um, with the final 
decision together as a team. We all went through each other's answers and we you know, came, came to a conclusion together. And so this is the pairings that we have now brought together with everyone. Um, and we hope that everyone is really happy with their pairings. And if not, please feel free to email us. Um, this is a, an experience for you as a mentor and a mentee. So we would like for you to feel the most comfortable with your pairing. So why join the program? Um, for many, this is a really obvious question in seek of mentoring and mentorship. Um, for me, it was more along the lines of, um, I have benefited greatly from mentoring and being a mentee. I have um, been able to pursue certain things in my career that I didn't think was possible, thanks to the guidance and advice of my mentor. And this was something that I wanted to pass along in a program such as this. So that's why when the opportunity arose for a project lead for a mentorship program, I said maybe this might be the opportunity for me to give back a little bit in the mentoring dynamic. And so I think when it comes to mentoring, we each have our own reasons for being here, maybe as a mentor or as a mentee, um, or maybe just entering into the dynamic where we can use um, a peer group mentoring situation where we engage with one another and find out you know, key perspectives, ideas. Um, that's also an element of mentoring that we hope to foster in this program, um, just an idea sharing platform. So we also have a mentorship guide, uh, which I'm going to upload into the chat right now. Um, this guide is really just um, a very basic understanding of the mentorship program. And also it includes some key insights on what mentoring is, as well as some documents at the end to help you facilitate your initial mental pairing. So please feel free to have a look through that. Um, the current document is only available in English. Um, and so we are reaching out to some of the members of our team to do some further translations into other languages. If you yourself uh, have the time uh, and capabilities to also provide a translation in your own language, that would be great. We are hoping to have this translated in as many languages as possible to share with as many people as you possibly can. And that being said, with the early career talks in future, we are also planning to have them in a multitude of different languages based on those of us in the team that are going to be facilitating them. So we're also looking forward to having that kind of accessibility in the future. So what is mentoring? We hear this concept of mentoring so often, um, and sometimes we have a clear understanding of what mentoring is. And then other times, uh, mentoring is a little bit of a gray area. You know, is it coaching? Is it training? Um, what can I expect from my mentor? So up until now, the traditional view of mentoring was really top down. It was kind of a teacher and student dynamic. And what I found was in previous times and, and maybe even in, um, in documents and in, in uh, journal articles discussing mentoring, in the past, it was very much, you know, a senior person shows this junior person how things are done and shows them the rope. So this is what we're trying to avoid in our mentoring program. We really want a mutually beneficial dynamic. We want what we have now also seen as reverse mentoring, where mentors also take the opportunity to learn from their mentees in different areas, you know, to engage and to share in a mutually beneficial relationship that doesn't just end with the mentor giving you know, to the mentee, but is an open channel of discussion and maybe an opportunity for collaboration and partnership going further down the line. So like I said, um, mentoring is not a subordinate relationship. It's not an opportunity for a mentor to, um, you know, pass down everything to the mentee who is just, you know, there as a lackey, so to say. Um, it is not coaching or therapy. While we do appreciate that some mentors do have the ability to be there for their mentees in a personal capacity, mentoring is um, not your coaching or therapy session. Mentoring cannot uh, at, at times also be permanent. At times it is. It depends on you and your dynamic. We do say that uh, most of the time, especially with this mentorship program, it runs annually. So by the end of the year, you as a mentor and mentee can decide if you would like to take on new mentees or if you as a mentee would like to be allocated to a new mentor for the next um, following year. This also provides an opportunity for you to get different perspectives. You may decide to keep your old mentoring, I say old for lack of a better word, your previous mentoring relationship and partner with someone new and, and you know that's completely up to you. And we say that mentoring is not based on distance. And we say this because we've also paired a lot of mentors and mentees that are really based in different corners of the world 
but have similar research interests. So we're really trying to foster a, an international perspective and also provide an opportunity to collaborate cross-culturally and cross-continentally. Now we move on to types of mentoring. We have the formal mentoring relationship. This, I would say, is more of the established mentoring dynamic. So maybe you have agreed to have set calendar dates where you meet and you discuss your goals, uh, your next steps, and this is the engagement that you have as a mentor and mentee. Um, there's more. There's also an informal or a spontaneous format. This can be maybe facilitated via regular communication on email or messaging apps. Um, maybe you choose to have regular calls um, and regular meetings, and it's more along the lines of, hi, uh, I really need to discuss something, and I was hoping you'd have some time to do so. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so then you facilitate your meetings. We also offer peer me mentoring, where maybe you are not looking for a senior um, academic or you're not looking for um, someone who is more junior in their career, but someone who is at the same career level as you, who can maybe be a sounding board for you, some advice, um, some open discussion about things that you are facing in your career. Group mentoring is something that can also occur within the mentoring program because some mentors have been allocated multiple mentees, which means that that mentor can opt to have a group mentoring dynamic in which all of their mentees may be invited into one session and they can have an open discussion about different elements of the mentoring process. <clears throat> With group mentoring, we also understand that some of our mentors are involved in mentoring outside of the program. And so what we will say is if you as a mentor are already mentoring people outside of the program and you would like for them to be um, in the program, please feel free to email us. Um, you, we're really looking forward to having more people joining the mentoring program so that we can facilitate further meetings um, across different um, maybe mentors themselves so that different people can meet and engage with each other. I see a question in the chat from um, Sarah. Do you recommend the mentor take the lead in deciding the type of communication suitable? Um, based on my experience, I would say that this is a discussion that um, you need to have with your mentee. Um, because I think you need to find the perfect balance and you know what works best for the two of you. And sometimes maybe your uh, type of communication um, might not work for the mentee for whatever reason. Um, and by type of communication, I'm assuming you're meaning which communication platform you should use. So uh, email, WhatsApp, um, yeah, messaging apps. If you could clarify there, and then maybe we can have a discussion about that. Um, but yeah, I would say that for any types of communication, I think it's best to have an open um, discussion with your mentee. If your mentee is really saying, I, I don't mind what we choose, um, I'm really open to anything that you can offer, then I would say, yeah, then take the lead and decide on the type of communication suitable. We also have one-on-one -on -one mentoring, which is probably the most traditional of mentoring styles, where we have one mentor and one mentee paired together. For those that are involved in one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions, we can offer a, an opportunity for us to have group mentor meetings once a month. So that's something that we can set up, um, maybe just have a Azure fix um, every third week of the month on a specific day. We can plan to have a group meeting and whoever would like to be involved in that session is more than welcome to join. Um, mentoring, what does mentoring involve? So you're going to see some words here that I'm sure many people you know, will also connect to a mentoring dynamic, trust and openness. Um, some of the things that you discuss with your mentor or your mentee are going to be confidential in nature. And so we ask that you trust in that relationship and you remain you know, aware and respectful of the boundaries of that relationship. Again, you can only really have a successful mentoring relationship if you're willing to be open with your mentee and your mentor about your needs and your expectations for the program. That being said, effective communication and listening skills is also a key component of mentoring. Um, share with one another, listen to each other, speak openly and freely with one another. Availability and commitment is one of the core or founding pillars of mentoring. So if you know that you are not really available to commit your time to such a process, we ask that you are really open with your mentee about this and your mentor and you know, state your availability and commitment from the beginning. You are building a partnership, and as a partnership grows, um, you need to accelerate your needs, remain mutually respectful, 
ensure that you are motivated in planning what you want from this relationship. If you don't know, that's also perfectly fine. That's something that you can discuss. Um, but we ask that maybe you have some sort of an idea of what you want to achieve out of this. If it means that you just want to have an opportunity to engage with um, someone else in a mentoring dynamic, that's also a plan. That's also a goal, so to say. We also encourage you to use this opportunity as a means to gain a little bit more self-awareness on what you want in your career journey. So this is your opportunity where if you don't know where you want to go and how you want to plan your future, this might be a great opportunity for you to do so and uh, maybe to find a little bit more understanding of what you expect from your career development and also have an opportunity to just ask others um, and have open and honest discussions about maybe the future that you see and what you're experiencing currently in your career level and your career journey. And lastly, a willingness to learn and grow. Um, as I've said before, the mentoring dynamic is mutually beneficial. And so we ask that both mentors and mentees take this into consideration and accept a willingness to learn from one another and to grow with each other. The mentoring stage, I would say, has four stages to it. The first is building the relationship, which is the stage that we're all in now. The introductory phase is getting to know each other and figuring out what the next steps of this um, mentoring dynamic is. And that leads to the second point, exchanging information and setting goals. Where do we see ourselves at the end of this year? Um, and hopefully we can get there together. Thirdly, working towards goals and deepening the engagement. And lastly, ending the formal mentoring relationship and planning for the future. The last step is really flexible. Some people choose to have a really extensive mentoring relationship and some people would rather opt for having a one year cycle. So now onto the part where I have a discussion with you that are in attendance. So uh, what can you gain from a mentoring experience? This is a really open-ended question. There's no wrong answers. <laughs> It's really up to you. Um, I just want to find out from you why you joined the mentoring program um, and maybe some of your ideas uh, for what you hope the mentoring program will be in the future. So yeah, if you have any answers for me, you can just unmute yourself and we can have a discussion. So I, I, can, I can start. Oh, um, Sarah, I think that's, hi. Yes, yeah. hi. Um, so, um, you know, I, my sort of understanding of the mentorship program, because I'm based in Pakistan and a few years ago, um, I myself ran a mentorship program through my firm, but for energy professionals in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, sort of a kind of similar in the sense that we used to match one-on-one -on -one and, and it's a very sort of difficult, uh, you know, process because sometimes, you know, there's more effort from the mentee, but other times there's more effort on the mentor. And so our success rate has pretty much been 50-50, right? So, um, so for this program, I think I was interested, one, because it was focused on you know, environmental law. So I thought that was that was interesting. And I'm interested to see what really could make it a, a, a successful relationship, really, uh, because I obviously have my uh, understanding of as a mentor, what should be done and as a mentee, you know, what should be done. So I think it's more from that um, perspective that you know, because we we need to have more mentorship programs in different areas. Um, and so I, I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to learn from you guys on what it takes to really run a mentorship program. And then because I've been mentors in other sort of different formats, I think you learn so much from the mentees. It creates more opportunities for a collaborative environment particularly in the international sense. So for instance, I I mentored for the Techstar Accelerator program. You're dealing with startups and there are startups from like all over the world. And then, you know, I used to think I'm from Pakistan. What could I really offer from, you know, sitting here? These are guys in Norway and Europe and all of that. But to my surprise, there's so much of an interest in this region as well. Like 
just recently i'm collaborating with one of the mentees because they're interested in you know finding out whether their project idea could work here and so you know they want to connect with people from the energy sector here so i i i hope to kind of gain that as well you know a bit more collaboration with the mentee i think it it opens you know more opportunities so sorry for rambling on but yeah no no not at all thank you so much for engaging with us and thank you so much for giving that insight I think that's um, something really important going forward. Um, I also have been a part of mentoring programs that, um, but I think for me, it was more of an informal setting. So it wasn't really like a mentoring program. So um, I'm really happy if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with us as the team to kind of like, you know, figure out how it was done and, and how we put this together, um, I'd be more than happy to share. Um, does anyone else have a similar experience to uh, Sarah? So I don't have an experience to share, but what I can say that I, I want to gain from the experience is that um, I want to gain more insight about the IUCN and how I can contribute it, to it as well. Because I think I became a member in September and then it's sort of very overwhelming. You don't know where to go, what to do, uh, who to talk to. And so I think that's a great opening because my mentor is quite involved in the IUCN and does a lot with them and so that's why i'm very interested to learn from her about uh, her work there thanks i think that that's that's a perfect opportunity yeah i think when when i joined um, the iuc and a few years ago it was also there's a lot of um groups there's a lot of uh, and especially now that we have the engage platform there's a lot of messages and notifications that are being shared and that sometimes can be a little bit overwhelming um, especially with all of the availability of some of the contacts that are through the IUC. And so I think that that's, that's yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, Say. it was the same for me. Yeah, when I joined first, I was like, um, didn't know what to do and where to go because I was just getting mails and everything. And one of the key reasons for me to join and this group was for me, when you see the environmental laws from one country or if you just get people in your own country, you are just observing laws from one, one area, particular area. And when it's dynamic and you are mixing environmental laws of different countries, you're getting a vast idea and getting more ways to come up with something new. And also your, your peers are getting bigger and networking is also one of the key areas for me to join here at first. And then later on after a few years, like now I'm getting into it, like how it is done and getting more um relevant papers and relevant ways how to i can contribute in these areas yeah thank you so much Said. yeah i think we all have a really similar experience when we joined the iucn um and it's great to see now that we can you know give back and, and be a part of it in an active way so that's also something that we want to encourage in the mentorship program that being said we are um one of the projects in one of the sub programs but we do have a direct link into the main, for example, the World Commission of Environmental Law. So if you have any ideas on things that you want to do in the World Commission of Environmental Law or in the IUCN, broadly speaking, please feel free to pass them along to me and I will filter them up the chain of command and we can have those meetings um, you know, with the, with the steering committee and with as many people as we can within the IUCN so that we can see how we can engage a little bit more. Even if that means us having a little bit more of an introductory workshop with some of the IUC in key figures to kind of explain the process and see how we can engage with them a little bit more. So yeah, please let me know if that would be of assistance to anyone. So yeah, does anybody else have anything that they would like to share? What can you gain from a mentoring experience or what can you gain from mentoring, broadly speaking? Hi, everyone. Um, For me, it's a bit the same. Like I want to get to know better IUCN. And up until now, I work uh, more mostly in environmental Swiss, uh, Swiss environmental law. And um, yeah, I hope to get a bit more a feeling of what are the possibilities to work more in international and en environmental law and get to know the people. Yeah, to know to get yeah, to get the, to know if I want to work more in international environmental law. Fantastic. And I know a lot of the mentors that are involved in the program are also involved from an international law perspective. So that's also a great opportunity. Um, and I think we'll be having a lot of meetings as well. Um, there is a plan to have a meeting um, with the mentors that are in international environmental law focused. And so maybe that would be a great opportunity for you to have more of a group mentoring session where you can ask some questions that you may have or, or maybe hear some insights from each of them. So that's yeah, that would be great. Yeah. 
Of course, Thank fantastic. You. Anyone else like to share? What can you gain from a mentoring experience? Where is it that we, everything has been? Hi, Babia. Hi, uh, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for giving such an opportunity for us to, to uh, learn from our this mentoring experience. So this is a great opportunity for me uh, to learn uh, about more about environmental law, especially uh, as developed countries has gone far be, uh, to the front. Uh, so we are still as a developing country making our way. And uh, I also want to make my research and PhD research on environmental law. And this would be, I think, one of the good opportunities for me learn from our mentors and which way I can succeed uh, because there are many ways, many problems we are facing in environmental law, but uh, and there are all, also like ready solutions in other countries where we can learn from them. And I think this would be a good opportunity for us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julia. I know uh, for maybe for those who are you know within their PhD process or those that are just beginning the PhD process, uh, maybe a mentoring session basically on on PhDs and and where to begin, how to start with your research proposal all the way to your final defense. Um, I have just completed my PhD, so I know the journey, um, and I'm really happy to share with anyone. I know some of the professors would also be more than willing to engage there, so maybe we can do that and, and have a little bit more of a discussion about, you know, PhDs in environmental law and share some ideas and, and maybe some, some forward planning there. So that would be great. Would anyone else like to share? What can you gain from mentoring, a mentoring experience? So just to summarize up until now, um, I think, this question and answer session has been the perfect opportunity to see that mentoring is really different for everyone. Everyone has a really different idea of what they hope to gain from the mentoring experience. And that's what makes this exciting. We have a lot of facilities available with us at the mentoring program um, because we have a lot of contacts with different mentors from different backgrounds um, and also for, with different mentees at different stages in their career. So use this opportunity as best as you can. Um, if you would like to be paired with more than one mentor, we're also able to facilitate that. So just let us know. Um, so we want to make this an opportunity that benefits you um, in whatever capacity you have joined this mentoring program. So we ask that you communicate with us as often as you can and as much as you want to, so that you can let us know, you know, if you think of something that you would like, an event that you would like us to host, um, a speaker that you would like us to approach to, you know, come and share their early career goals and their early career journeys. We can definitely do that as well. And now onto the last segment of uh, my presentation, and then we're going to have a full open <laughs> discussion. So uh, how to facilitate your mentoring experience. So for those of us that are new to the whole mentoring dynamic, um, maybe we've had mentoring in a more informal sense that we wouldn't really have classified as mentoring. So I think a lot of us have had maybe a supervisor who has um, maybe after we've concluded our supervising you know, relationship is still present in our lives, still giving us that guidance, still encouraging us along the way, that we would also describe as mentoring. I'm still in contact with mentors, with my supervisor from my master's. Um, and you know, this is, they don't supervise me anymore, but you know, having that person there that I can still engage with has really been beneficial. So if we're thinking of any mentoring dynamic, whether that's in the formal sense of what we thought mentoring to be, that one-on-one -on -one direct, let's sit down, let's have a meeting once a month and have some discussions, or whether it's something a little bit more spontaneous over a cup of coffee with peers, or whether it's, you know, um, those of you that have opted for an informal mentoring relationship, just checking in over email or, or messaging app. We always start with, you know, the initial, tell me about yourself. It's really important for you to share your information, who you are, what your goals are, what your plans are. And even if you don't have goals or plans, how you foresee the next year progressing for yourself. And that way your mentor, your mentee knows a little bit more about you and how they can also help you in the progression that you have set forward. 
do you have any previous mentoring experience? And if you don't, you know, that's perfectly fine as well. But maybe you have learned something from your own mentoring experience that you would like to bring into the mentoring dynamic. And that we really encourage. Um, what that specific mentoring dynamic looks like. So between you and, you know, the other person that you are in this dynamic with, how do you want to shape this? Do you want to have regular consistent meetings where you plan a calendar day every month and that's where you meet? Or is it something more along the lines of, I'm, I'm going to drop you a message whenever I need something. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Do you, um, are you comfortable with us meeting a little bit more informally? Maybe we have, a, you know, a, a video call every now and then. Um, that's completely and entirely up to you. And as well, in discussing that mentoring dynamic, it's important for you to figure out what your boundaries are for mentoring. Yeah. So if you know that there are certain things that you cannot provide expertise on, it's really great for you to say that to your mentee from the outset or from, to your mentor from the outset. Or if you know that there are certain things that you would rather prefer we stick to in the mentoring dynamic, you want to discuss one element of you know, your career journey, then that's something that you can do as well. But ultimately, mentoring is learning from one another um, and using this experience to engage a little bit more personally with someone who I think otherwise we maybe would not have had contact with. I think that's always a really interesting part of the mentoring program is that we start to become connected with people that I don't think we would have met in any other setting, which is a really fantastic opportunity for us to grow together and, and for us to find out a little bit more about each other. So. Uh, the other way, that is it for me. So I'm going to stop sharing. Great. Um, so I'm just going to open up the floor to any questions that we have um, about the mentoring program, about mentoring, about um, maybe some events that you are thinking of uh, for the mentoring program. Um, whatever it is, please feel free. Now is the time. Um, in the meantime, uh, what I will do is, I think I'm just going to tell you all a little bit about um, my career journey, just to give you kind of an idea um, of, you know, what it looks like and, and, and maybe why we have this early career talks and, and, and different parts of the mentoring program. So I am originally from South Africa. Um, I moved to Austria uh, three years ago to start my PhD. Um, and I uh, did the complete academic route. So I finished my bachelor's, I did a double major in economics and in law. Um, and then I did my master's uh, in international trade law. Um, and then I started my PhD in climate change and energy law. Uh, so my journey, I would say, was not linear at all. Um, when I was in my bachelor's, I had an idea that I wanted to be involved in corporate law. I worked at a law firm while I was doing my bachelor's um, and I hated it. For me personally, it just wasn't for me. Um, just the, I didn't feel like I had a purpose working in a law firm and I didn't feel like I could do something that I wanted to enjoy. And um, I realized that maybe academia was more the route for me. Um, I enjoy you know, engaging with students. I enjoy lecturing, I enjoy researching and that's kind of uh, my cup important, so to say. Um, and so after I completed um, my, bachelor's I started my master's um, and my master's uh, was actually during COVID uh, 2020 so I was at the university that I did my master's at Stellenbosch University I was there for two months and then I uh, was at home <laughs> for the rest of the time and so um, when I was doing my master's I took it as an opportunity for me to kind of get involved in a few more places and so I became involved in the World Commission on Environmental Law, the Global Pandemic Network, the International Sustainable Development Research Society. Um, and I really do commend uh, all of the leaders in each of those organizations because they gave me a, a chance. Um, I would consider myself a very determined and ambitious person, um, but I was also very young. I was very fresh out of university um, and I didn't really have much of a direction. And so um, being in those different research groups and, and being in those different research societies and allowed me the opportunity to start publishing with people who were more senior to me and who gave me a chance. And that was my first introduction into mentoring. So seeing that perspective of, you know, different people at different stages in their career journey, being able to tell me, you know, you can do this and we believe in you and, you know, bringing me into the rooms um, with some, you know, really amazing people. Um, 
And from then I decided that I wanted to do a PhD and that was in 2021. And so um, at the time, the supervisor of my master's, so one of my master's supervisor had said, you know, there's an opportunity for you to move countries and move to Austria and do a PhD in Austria. And I said, you know, why not? Um, looking back, I think I would not, uh, I don't know if I would describe myself as a risk taker, but um, I did not speak a word of German three years ago. Um, and I was moving in the time of COVID. I arrived in, in Austria on the 2nd of January. Um, and it has been a whirlwind roller coaster since then. Um, I've had the honor and privilege of being involved in a lot of different projects. Um, and in, uh, I mean, I, I work at the Research Center for Climate Law, which is a specific research center with the University of Graz. Um, and my mentor supervisor trusted me enough to tell me that he wanted me to co lead the center with him. And knowing how fresh I was, but knowing how ambitious and determined I am, he gave me the job um, and I moved and I did my PhD in three years. I started our PhD workshop in climate law. I've been lecturing, I've attended numerous conferences. I've had the opportunity of going to a number of world um, of European Commission meetings as a Global South representative. I've met with the Pan-African Parliament to discuss the model laws. I've been involved in, um, wow, a lot of different things along the way. Um, I just finished a research project on just decarbonization uh, with some colleagues in Norway, the United Kingdom, in Czech Republic. Um, and yeah, it's it's been interesting. I'm now currently a project lead for a project with the University of Padova in Italy. And uh, we're discussing energy communities and uh, the European perspective of energy communities. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's for me. I still don't really believe where I am in my career journey. I don't know uh, if other people have imposter syndrome. Um, I think I do. Uh, it's something that I face every day, and it's something that I have to force myself, kind of look myself in the mirror, and say, "You did make it here for a reason, and you do have the accomplishments that you have for a reason." And someone believed in you, so you should believe in yourself. You know. Um, and so it's been a very interesting journey, and I don't think I would be where I am today without my mentor and my supervisor, because they gave me a chance and they gave me the platform to do things that I didn't think I would be able to do. And so that was kind of giving me the passion to start a mentoring program. Um, and I think because it is voluntary, all of the mentors that have signed up for this program are really committed to it. And they want to be here and they want to help and they want to see how they can you know, progress anyone in their career journeys because maybe they know what it's been like or for some professors they've also indicated that you know they didn't have this kind of support they didn't have someone who was just there to kind of bounce ideas off of or to give them that motivation that they needed in their career to make the necessary steps that they needed to make and so um, i'm really excited about this program and i really commend all of the mentors and mentees for joining because you took a chance on a program that is really new um, and I hope that we can do it justice and I hope that we can provide something for you that really does give you a benefit in the end and that we start this program and that it continues long after I am no longer a project lead, which I hope to still oversee for a little bit longer. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. And that's kind of like the, the motivation behind the mentorship program itself. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know if anyone has any questions now, um, anything that they want to know about the mentorship program or any questions in general. I mean, this is now an open discussion. Hi, so I actually have a few questions. Um, of course. Yeah, so one is, uh, let's say, you know, along the way the men, you know, when we're discussing goals with our mentee and I feel that it's appropriate that the mentee should connect with a particular professional who happens to be another mentor in the same program. Mm -hmm. So is that something that you, you would recommend? Do you think that, mentors would be more receptive to at least just maybe having a one conversation 100 percent, 100 percent. i know with the other mentors they are really um you know they, we even had some mentors last night who were you know giving contact details in the chats to for people to contact them personally and so we have some mentors that have a lot more time and a lot more availability to be able to do that 
And we have other mentors who maybe don't have as much time, but would maybe be able to arrange one or two meetings. But all of the mentors are really willing to have um, discussions with anyone. We'd also say that if you have um, a colleague who is outside of the mentor program, yeah. and you want your mentee to contact with that colleague outside of the yeah, mentor program, sure. please feel free to do that as well. Um, we would also ask if you would share that details with us so we can maybe ask them if they want to join the mentoring program because the more the merrier. We have a, a lot of mentors as is, but we're trying to grow the program as big as possible and make it you know, a really good functioning network. Yeah, and uh, I also wanted to just get your thoughts on what you think a mentorship program is not. So we often hear that a mentorship program is not for the mentees to like go and ask for a job you know and maybe that's not something that would happen in this setting perhaps because it's it's very international but you know it, it it is something that um you know i used to tell mentees that you know that's maybe not uh, you know appropriate that you know you straight up ask your mentor like here's my cv you know can you hire me but i wanted to get your thoughts on on that point yeah. as well I have to agree with you. Um, the way that I say it is that your mentor relationship is not a job interview. And so you wouldn't give your CV to just you know anyone in any setting. There really has to be the, uh, the job application and job advertisement must be open. In that sense, if you as a mentor have had the opportunity to have an engagement with your mentee and then you say to them, you know, I am really interested in the work that you do. I'm working on a project and I would like for you to join our project. Please send me your CV. Then the door opens. Until that time, your mentoring dynamic is not a job interview. It is not your opportunity to have a job. I would also say your mentoring relationship, for me personally, is not coaching. And now when I say coaching, I don't mean like career coaching as in, you know, these are the steps that I've taken in my career journey. Yeah. But I mean, your mentor is not there to provide you with uh, life coaching. They are not there to be, you know, your, your motivational speaker, because I do think that mentoring dynamics do have to be so to a certain extent work based, especially with this program. If you and your mentor decide that you want to have a little bit more of a personal mentoring dynamic, that's up to you. But I don't think that that's the starting point. And that's something that you have to discuss. So if you as a mentee I say to your mentor, um, I would also really enjoy if you could be a mentor for me in my personal setting. And then your mentee, your mentee or your mentor has an opportunity to say to you, you know, listen, I don't think that would be advised for me. Maybe I would suggest finding someone else to be a mentor in your personal capacities. Additionally, mentoring is not therapy. Your mentors are not um, trained. They are not skilled in psychology, in therapy. And there is a reason for that. They are your career mentors, you know, or, or they are your professional mentors. And so there are certain times where maybe there are things happening in your life where you can share with your mentor and say, listen, I don't think I can do this right now. There's some things, personal things that are going on in my life and, you know, I'm, I'm not available. That we can totally understand. We all go through personal things, but you have to understand that your mentors are not built to give you that kind of life and personal and psychological advice. Firstly, those are the three main things. And then I would say that mentoring is not a one-way relationship for you to just pull information from someone else. Because I think a mentor also gets a little bit frustrated if you are just sitting there saying, you know, I have this paper that I need to write. Can you send me readings? I uh, have this event that I need to do. Can you please put me in contact with someone? Your mentor is not uh, your middleman. That's what I say. Your mentor is not someone who is there to kind of help you with, you know, everyday tasks that you do in your life. They're not there to be the bridge between you and your stepping stone. Let's, let's put it that way. Your mentor is not your stepping stone. Um, what I would envision and what I would say from my personal experience Mentoring, and this is why we say it's a mutually beneficial dynamic. You and your mentor are work, work, walking side by side. You're taking each step together and you're saying that this is where I'm at currently. Um, have you been there before? Can you give me some advice on you know, what you experienced when you were doing this? You know, it's, it's very generalized in the sense that you're not going to say, you know, I'm working on this paper and I need your advice on this paper but I'm writing 
some publications. I don't know where to start looking. I really, I'm so overwhelmed with the writing process. I don't know how you know to get to the next stages in uh, the publication process. We can see generalized advice, generalized guidance is really, really key because your mentor is also there um, to kind of help you in the areas where you have you know, some concerns and some questions in your professional life, but they are not there as a source of information. I would also say that um, when, when we say our professional lives as well, maybe there's also an opportunity to say here that if you are also facing challenges in your work environment, yeah, and like let's say you are dealing with some colleagues or a senior who you just can't seem to you know have a, a good relationship with, that's also something that you can bring to your mentor and say, listen, I'm facing this problem in the work environment. Is this something that you've faced before? Um, do you have any recommendations on who I should approach? Um, you know, this is kind of what I've experienced and I'm not too sure what to do with it. I don't know how to deal with this. Do you have some advice for me? So I think that that's probably the best way to think of it. In one word, I would think that mentoring is kind of like advising. And that's why I really do think that it's mutually beneficial because if you as a mentor, for example, are dealing with students or you as a mentor are dealing with um, maybe a new I don't know, new information and you want someone to speak to you about it, your mentee is also a place you can go to. You know, if you are as a mentor in academia, that's what I sometimes have. I can go to my mentee and say, you know, listen, I'm actually dealing with some students and I really want to know how to engage them a little bit more. Like I'm, I'm finding that I'm losing my students in my lecture and I don't know how, you know, what what can you give me as advice? You know, and that that's also why I say it's it's mutually beneficial. But that's just my perspective. So if anybody else has anything else, I'm, I'm also here to learn. Um, if anyone else has any other insights on that, please feel free to share. Yeah. So uh, Sarah, I don't know if you have any other questions or anything else you would uh, like to add? Yeah, just, just one last one. So in my case specifically, um, although I have been paired, but I think still waiting on the confirmation from the mentee right so just in case that pairing doesn't happen are there opportunities for me or maybe for other mentors like me to still be part of it in a group setting or occasional yeah. on other events yeah for this so, program so what um i got some really nice um ideas last night from some of the mentors and mentees that were there um what i'm going to do is plan a Firstly, a mentor jour fix. So the mentors have also asked if they could please have their own meeting just for the mentors, for them mm -hmm. to discuss and share with each other and maybe engage on some of the questions that they have about the mentoring dynamic and also just be there for each other and support each other within the mentoring dynamic. I also have a jour fix plan for the mentees, which is a separate meeting. And the mentees will also have a chance to kind of just engage with one another. And that's also like, both of those would be peer mentoring setups where you would engage with your mentors and your mentees and you kind of ask them any questions that you have, you know, maybe you don't know how to approach your mentor about something, or maybe this is, um, you need to ask your mentee a question and you don't know if this is an appropriate question to be asking. We learn from each other. Um, it's also maybe a networking opportunity for the mentors and for the mentees respectively. After that, I am now from today's meeting thinking of doing a group mentoring meeting once a month. So now with everything that's going on, I'm going to maybe send an email so that I can give uh, rough dates or rough indications of certain meetings that are happening so we can plan them in advance. So I'm thinking like every second week of the month on a Thursday evening from whatever to whatever time, CET, or we try and make it work, that that would be our group mentoring meeting. And in that meeting, everybody can come together and we can just put forward some questions that you have. You can email me questions before or we can discuss them here about anything that you want to discuss with regards to environmental law, the profession, your career, um, anything that you want to engage with in a group mentoring dynamic. Yeah. So that would be monthly meetings. Um, and if you know the dates in advance, then maybe you can also plan in advance for those meetings. So that's what I'm going to try and do. Yeah. And then I, we're going to have maybe specialized uh, workshops so the one that I was speaking about, about international environmental law professors um, engaging, you know, with, with us, and then another PhD session for those of us that are involved in the PhD programs 
for us to discuss then. So if you have any other ideas about events that you want to have or specific, specialized mentoring meetings that you would like to have, we can also do that. Um, I know earlier on in, in one of the early career talks, some attendees had also mentioned that they would like to see some more information on um, career dynamics. So uh, a, a session on imposter syndrome, for example, and how some people who are more senior in their career have dealt with it or um, publishing and writing, you know, how, what are some of the tips and skills and advice that you can give there. So those are also ideas of events that we have planned. So this year we have a lot of events in the pipeline. Um, and so I just need to kind of put together the calendar and that's why I'm going to ask if you have any event ideas, please let me know. And then I can kind of get a calendar together and share it with everyone, maybe by the end of March so that we can plan for the year ahead. Yeah. Any other questions or any other comments or anything else anyone would like to add? Yeah, so um, like I said, with the mentoring dynamic, um, I really encourage you to just have consistent communication between and in, in the relationship. Um, I think you'll only know what works for you the longer that you are paired with someone. And I am glad that this is kind of a year long program. So um, we don't know at this stage if we will be ending in December of 2024 or if we will have like a, an ending in January to, to kind of make it a real full you know, 12 month process. Um, but for now, um, we just really encourage you to reach out to your mentors and your mentees. Again, if you feel that um, maybe the mentor that you're paired with is great for one area that you have concerns over or one area that you would like um, you know, a mentor for, but you need a mentor for some other area, um, then please also let us know. We can try and, and pay you um, as best we can. And yeah, if there's any other question, any other comments, anything else, anything anyone would like to add? I think you've, you've all seen me with the sunrise now, so this is great. <laughs> Okay, fantastic. Then um, what I'm going to do is I think I will just post uh, my the email for the mentorship program. And okay. Fantastic. So that is the email for the mentorship program. And this is my personal email. Um, I encourage you to either reach out on the mentorship program email or on my personal email if you have any questions, um, if you have any event ideas, anything that you um, are struggling with or anything that you just want to discuss um, at these mentoring meetings, please feel free to do that um, and I will be in contact with everyone throughout the process. Um, once everyone that we have paired with the mentors and the mentees have been finalized, I will also contact all of the other mentors that have not yet been paired because we do have an extensive list of mentors that have not yet been paired. And so we will probably have a bigger group with all of the mentors a little bit later, um, just so that you know everybody is able to access everyone. So yeah, thank you again. And, and thanks to all of you for being here this morning, this evening, this afternoon, wherever you're joining from whatever corner of the world. It was great to start my day with you guys, and I hope all of you have a fantastic day going forward, and I wish you a wonderful weekend and a great March. It is the 1st of March today, so yeah, I hope you all have a fantastic month and see you again soon. Thank you, you too. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, thanks, thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.